I've fought to keep mice out of my home for quite some time. Winners are worse. Pest control companies were a waste of money with baited mouse traps by the foundation. I was still finding mice in my own traps inside my house. I decided to keep the mice out and fix the problem myself once and for all, and I will show you how I did it. My first thought was I need to better understand my opponent, so I did some research and reconnaissance. I found out the mouse I was dealing with is called the deer mouse, with a brownish back and white underbelly. Very common to Nova Scotia where my house is. Also after searching YouTube for footage of the size hole a mouse could fit through, it seemed to me any hole the size of a dime, this mouse could make its way through. So now knowing the size hole my opponent can sneak through, I inspected the exterior perimeter of my home with a fine tooth comb, looking for where mice could gain entry. My house is quite old. It has been retrofitted years ago outside over the old exterior wall covering of cedar shapes with strapping, a layer of one inch white beaded foam, and then vinyl siding. The edges of all these different layers of materials come to a stop near the foundation. The small spaces between the layers and the soft chewable foam provide entry points up into the siding and into the wall. Anywhere along these edges of the wall, where the old wooden cedar shakes are deteriorated under the beaded foam, also provide a way into the inner wall of my house. The next area I will address is mice using the bottom of the vinyl siding corner post to get into the home. These are great for mice. The inside of the corner posts provide a convenient tunnel for mice to run up the whole length of the side of the house, right up to the soffit around your roof. As well in my case, the beaded foam board meets creating a seam right at the corner, providing access to burrow under the siding, chewing insulation and creating holes in destruction. After covering how mice exploit corner posts to get into the home, let's touch on crawl spaces quickly. Then I will show you how I fix these problems permanently. Not long after I first acquired my house, I opened the crawl space under my porch to inspect what damage mice and rodents may have done. As you can see, a picture is worth a thousand words. That installation had been previously used and kept in place with strapping. Mice and rodents alike use the installation for nests and burrow within it. 
This coupled with gravity, time and moisture had my crawl space looking like what you see here. Having things in this condition wasn't going to help much to keep my porch warm in winter. I wanted to fix my house problems permanently, never having to deal with any of this sort of mess ever again. So in the spirit of that, let's get into my solution for each of the three problem areas I have shown you. After some thought, I finally came up with an idea that would work in all three of my problem areas. I wanted to complete my task with what I could find at my local home hardware store. I'll give you a list of tools and materials I use you can find locally. I'm more about functionality with most things and cosmetics is more of a second priority, but I decided to use a galvanized wire mesh, also called hardware cloth, that has holes a quarter inch square. I cut it to fit and fasten it to the house over the suspected mouse entry points. Let's go more in depth and I'll show you the tools I used and exactly how I install the mesh in each problem area. Some tools I already had, but I made a list of things needed for this project, assuming you started from scratch. All items in the list can be bought at home hardware. See video description for details. If you don't own an impact driver, you may get by using an ordinary drill, cordless or not. If you can get a drill to hold the number two square bit snugly, it will work fine for what we are doing. If you chose to be frugal about purchasing a bit to drive screws, or you are going the drill route, you could use a sacrificial screwdriver and cut the handle off and use the metal piece for a bit in a drill. It may be cumbersome and require more patience, but it is a feasible option if you don't have other options. This is the star of the show to fix all problems, the protagonist to our mouse antagonist. Use the black marker for marking your measurements on the mesh screen. Any tape measure will do. The snips I use are an older style, but these will be needed to cut the mesh screen to the measurements. I believe these will rust over time to a point that don't look new and shiny. You could paint them if you are concerned, or you could pay extra for galvanized or stainless steel screws. These may also rust over time to a point that don't look new and shiny, so again, you could pay extra for galvanized or stainless steel washers. You could paint them in the end with your screws, which could lead to painting the mesh screen too, unless you cover it with painter's tape or masking tape. I chose to do none of the above because I thought the finished product is not very noticeable and most importantly my mouse problem is gone. I'm not too fond of ticks and creepy crawlers, so that is the main reason I wear the yellow coveralls but you may be more brave than I about such things. Getting something in your eye is never fun, so I wear safety glasses. This light has a strap to go around your head, holding it in place. Great for having hands-free capabilities in crawl spaces. Any work, light, or trouble light will do here. Be 
Because we are dealing with mice, I highly recommend wearing respiratory protection of N95 or greater. Mice can carry respiratory viruses that are harmful to humans, and handling old insulation or building materials mice have lived in could be detrimental to you without personal protective equipment, or PPE. The mesh screen can be sharp on the edges after cutting it. Gloves would protect you when handling the mesh. Now let's get into what to do with all this stuff. You can do this in a few ways. I found my problem areas and dealt with them first, then went back and finished the length of one side of the house. If you are not sure where mice are getting in, it wouldn't hurt to install mesh around the entire perimeter of your home. Starting by covering the gaps between building materials sandwiched between the foundation and vinyl siding, I measure from the base of the foundation out to the edge of the vinyl siding, and then add one inch. The extra inch is in case you're shaping the mesh and find you need that little bit more material to span the gap. Use the black marker to mark the mesh where you want to cut it. I cut a four to five foot length of mesh at a time. The shorter the piece is, the easier it is to work with. Start on one end of the mesh, working your way to the other end, alternating with screw washer fastener combo on each side of the mesh edge. Make sure the edge of the mesh lines up with the siding before you get too far along. Space out the screws just far enough that the mesh doesn't sag, defeating the whole premise of keeping mice out. The corner posts are done in a similar fashion. I cut out a piece of mesh that is an L shape to wrap around the corner of the house. Snip the inner and outer corners of the L shape a few squares inward. This will allow you to fold the mesh up around the outer edge of the corner post so it can be fastened down. The few snips on the inner corner of the L-shaped mesh allows the mesh to be shaped around the contour of the wood next to the foundation, which will also be secured with fasteners. In the past, I have tried steel wool and spray foam to fill the corner post bottom openings. It doesn't cut it long term and is bad for water drainage and ventilation. I had the steel wool rust and deteriorate, the foam breaks down over time, and I still had a mouse problem. Also, it doesn't look that great. I did some looking online and found plastic caps that fit over the bottom of corner posts. However, they didn't look like they would fit my style of corner posts, so I abandoned that idea. Lastly, under the porch wasn't too difficult to do. I attached vapor barrier between the floor joists and reinstalled that installation after moving the old stuff. 
I used thinly cut strips of mesh to hold up the bad insulation in place using the same fasteners we had previously used. Then I used the same mesh to cover over the entire underside of the porch to protect my insulation and work and keep mice out. I later finished off with fastening down a two inch layer of beaded foam over the mesh for a little more air value and warmth in winter. So that concludes all I have on fighting off the rodent opponent. I hope this information serves you well. Now if I can just find a guaranteed way to keep mice out of a car, 